Well, hey guys. I hope you all had a fantastic new year. Mine was all right. I'm just trying to think of ways on how I can become a better me for this year. I mean, I thought I did all the right things last year, but instead, I ended up on the naughty list. Santa brought me a lump of old DVDs. I mean, that's like a step down from coal. At least with coal, I could use it to burn an actual fire instead of playing one in the background. Ah yes, the evolution of VHS tapes that were eventually phased out by CDs. DVDs are, well, a quickly declining archaic technology. I mean, most modern laptops don't even have disk drives anymore. It's kind of amazing to think of how fast our technology has progressed in the span of just 30 years. When I was in the seventh grade, floppy disks were only just fading out, and kids were starting to bring USBs to school that had like 250 megabytes in it, which used to be pretty amazing at the time. And now we're at a point where we have portable hard drives where we can store terabytes of data. Don't get me wrong, I still appreciate the classic CD. It was a big innovation in the world of technology, and I always found this evolution from VHS tape to be really interesting. The biggest difference between VHS VHS tapes and DVDs was that added element of interactivity. The invention of the DVD player allowed for companies to have more freedom to explore and experiment with new options and features by adding things like unique menu overlays, bonus content, deleted scenes, and director's cuts of different films. Features that wouldn't have been possible on something as limited as the VHS tape. They also tried to make this bonus content fun, and while slightly overlooked, if you really dig hard enough, you'll find that a lot of these DVDs included minigames and DVD-ROM games as well. And how do I know that? I played them all. Back before we had features like New Game Plus or games that were overly grindy for the sake of trophy hunting, once a game was done, it was done. No matter how many times you play it, this gonna end up the same. So whenever my sister and I would finish a game to 100%, we'd scrounge through old DVDs and we'd find some pretty weird stuff. A lot of these DVDs offered different games you could play through the interactive menus, and some went the extra mile and included extra games that could only be ran off of your computer. While the menu game games were a little bit lackluster, you could tell that some of the DVD-ROM games that could only be played online had a lot more effort put into them, and I actually enjoyed a fair bit of them. So why don't we take a look at some of the best, and arguably some of the worst, DVD video games. The first game we'll be looking at is off of the Lilo & Stitch DVD, known as the Build an Alien Experiment game. I remember being really excited to try this game. There were so many different alien experiments that were created in the Lilo and Stitch franchise, so being able to actually sit down like a mad scientist and generate my own creatures sounded like a dream come true. Not long after trying this game though, I felt a little bit duped. In order to generate a custom monster, you have to answer a series of trivia questions. If you get all the answers right, you have to press the three glowing buttons at the bottom of the screen in a particular order in order to successfully generate a monster. The only issue here is there's little to no rhyme or reason in this game and you have to do a grueling process of trial and error with button combinations in order to get your monster. So you really don't have the freedom to do what you want, but rather the buttons have to be pressed in a specific order and you aren't given any hints as to what that order is. So eventually, having to guess and get it wrong so many times just gets boring. For some reason, I remember this game being a lot more fun, but it's probably because at the time of the film's release, the only experiment we knew of was Stitch. The TV show would air a year or so later, so all the creatures we'd see in the minigame were new and exciting and worth exploring. But I think I'll stick to my Pokemon fusion generators. Oh my, that is not exactly what should happen. Uh oh. Wow, speaking of monsters, let's see what we got on this Monsters Inc. DVD. The first game is called Peekaboo Boo's Door Game. The objective of this game is to go through each human door and find the missing pieces of Boo's door that were hidden by Randall, even though in my alternate universe, Randall was killed off, death by shovel. Give me that shovel! Come here! Collect all the pieces in order to reassemble Boo's door and reunite her with Sully. A very standard point-and-click mystery game where you're guided by a slightly unenthused Billy Crystal reprising his role as Mike Wazowski. Oh boy, am I glad you're here. Alright, listen, we got a major emergency on our hands. One so big, we don't even have a number for it. Seriously, he doesn't fully sound in character and even some of his cheesy one-liners are delivered with such low energy. It's like someone just wrote something on the fly for him to read without any prior context whatsoever. The game is pretty standard and obviously better suited for someone much younger than myself, but the real winner here is the demo level from Monsters Inc. Scream Team Training. 
Wait a minute, what? I can't tell if my computer is bad or if this is just how the game starts up. Oh, thank God. In this demo, you're trained by Sully as you undergo screen team training by working as a lunch lady to all the employees. Hot dog, those entry level positions are really promising. You have to take a series of food orders within a certain time frame with there being 30 stages you have to complete. You have a selection of all kinds of weird food options ranging from giant ants to eyeballs on a platter. After a while with 30 stages in total, the game got a little bit repetitive. But to be honest, I did have a little bit of fun replaying this and it also made me a little hungry too. Don't judge me, you can't tell me that doesn't look like sushi and purple stuff. Not just that, but the game definitely has its own unique style. The graphics in this game are pretty decent to look at too. Everything except for Sully, of course, who looks like he just jumped straight from Uncanny Valley. Jesus Christ, oh my god! Now I know how Boo felt to have this hunk of horror screaming at her. Maybe we should tone down the nightmare fuel with something a little more family friendly. The Lion King 1.5 had two interactive games that really jumped out at me. One was innovative, but overall boring, and the other one was just kind of hilarious. We'll look briefly at Timon and Pumbaa's Virtual Safari. This game was... not so good. Like, I understand what they were going for. The Virtual Safari was, just as the name states, as an interactive ride that was made to mimic the Disney experience of going to one of those interactive park rides. That's right, kids! Instead of paying hundreds of dollars and waiting in line on a hot day for up to six hours, just buy some noise-canceling headphones, crank that soldier boy, and get a friend to rock your chair back and forth for that D-Box simulation experience. I've never really been partial to rides like this, and as someone who doesn't live anywhere near a Disney, it does get points for being innovative and for being my first experience experiencing experiences like this. Uh, so let's move on. There was also this really funny spoof game of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire called Who Wants to Be King of the Jungle? And I gotta say, this was actually pretty hilarious. Just like in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you have to answer a series of questions, you're given three lifeline options where you can call your Disney pals, and instead of a prize of a million dollars, you get a whole lot of grubs. Heck, they even animated little bits of this rather than just using their usual route of reusing animated clips. And even Meredith is here, and she has her own back and forth dialogue with Timon. Now, I didn't bother rewatching any of the Lion King movies before I played this, so at some point I actually did get a little bit stuck on these questions. What does grown up Nala advise grown up Simba to do about Kovu? Get to know him, banish him, invite him to dinner, kill him. <laughs> Sure, Nala isn't some <coughs> savage, vengeful monster, but just to be sure, I think I'm gonna go 50-50 on this. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Uh, wait, what? I mean, well, you know what? I still have one option left. I think I'm just gonna ask the audience. I mean, they never steer me wrong and it's 50-50. I can't lose. You wanna pull the herd? No problem. Okay, herd, Timon needs your help. Okay, Timon, you see what the audience thinks, but you know what? It's your choice in the end. Well, there you have it. Meredith, D is my final answer. Uh, that's incorrect, and I wanted you to win so badly. Really? Well, the next time, whisper the right one to me before I say F Guys, I really think I saved the best for last with this one. On my quest of finding and playing every DVD game that I owned, I somehow stumbled across this gem. Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. That's right. And this baby came with seven DVD-ROM games. So let's check them out. Let's take a look at the game Hypercorn. Wait, why does it look like they took his face in this image directly from that- Oh my god. In Hypercorn, Jimmy Neutron dreams he's in a nightmare world made of creamed corn. You have to use the arrow keys to jump from hypercube to hypercube while avoiding the creamed corn geysers. Going through each level, you're tasked with rescuing all the members of your family, including your mom, your dad, and your family dog Goddard. What a weird concept. The hypercube platforms are so close together, the colors are all muddy, and I had so much trouble figuring out when a geyser was gonna shoot up. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the face of a boy who's lost everything he's ever loved. You know what? Let's try C minus. Get it? Because he's under the sea. In C minus, you and Goddard have to deep sea dive, dodge incoming furniture and fish, all to rescue your parents. 
Wait, why do all these missions revolve around Jimmy saving his family? In this game, you have to collect bubbles to keep your air supply up and grab bones that will boost Goddard's turbo meter that you need to help you escape the clutches of the big fish as he tails you on your deep sea dive. This game would have been decent if not for the fact that you're constantly getting smacked in the face by fish. There's just too many of them to dodge at times. A lot of the power-ups are few and far between, so I kept finding myself getting eaten by the big fish due to the fact that there were no bones in sight that I could use to power my turbo meter. You just can't outrun them unless you have that boost, so grabbing every bone you pass counts. And that in itself can be hard to do. Wow. And to add insult to injury, they give us yet another unrealistic beauty standard for fish people. When will it end? Let's look at the game Pain Pain Go Away. I have a lot of questions. Cindy got her hands on Jimmy's pain transference helmet. Our boy is in for plenty of pain unless you help him get it back. Can I just say, yikes? Little Miss Fifty Shades of Cindy over here is enjoying that pain device a little too much. You basically have to navigate through this weird top-down Zombies Ate My Neighbors-esque game in order to find Cindy and retrieve your pain helmet. But my question is, why are there hordes of evil dentists? It's so misleading. Just looking at the title screen alone would have you think the game's antagonist is an evil dentist, when in actuality, Cindy's the real villain. She's the one sending you electric shocks of pain. These guys are just here to make sure your insurance is covered for all those feelings you got last week. Ah, <laughs> gotcha, Cindy. What? Oh, oh, Jimmy, you had one job. Finally, we're gonna look at the mini game titled Lightspeed Liftoff. I have even more questions than I did with Pain Pain Go Away. I don't know what I'm doing in this game. Apparently, you're supposed to grab yellow glowing objects for 50 points while avoiding obstacles that pass by. You also have an energy meter that can be recharged by grabbing the bouncing globe that will show up periodically. And if your meter runs out, well, it's game over. There is a lot to this game that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You'd think Ultra Lord would give you points, but instead he deals damage. And those bouncing globe power-ups? I'm touching it, but it does it's not registering. Give me my juice. They don't even explain why you're naked. You're just running really fast and collecting clothes. And for some reason, Carl joins on the second stage and then it's nowhere to be found on the third. To make things worse, I can't see a damn thing. The navigation in this game is so bad. Jimmy takes up a good chunk of the screen and it's hard to see what direction incoming obstacles are coming from. Eventually, I figured out that in order to play this game and not lose, you have to stay to the far right and left side in order to avoid getting smacked in the face by oncoming objects. Because if you stand in the middle of the screen, you can barely see what's coming at you, especially in a second level. Oh hey, I did it! Wait, you're not gonna put the clothes on? You're a sick man, Jimmy. And that was my mixed bag of DVD games that I played growing up. I'm sure you guys have been there before. Eight years old, broke, no games to play. We all venture into the darkness at some point and do things we're not proud of. But in all seriousness, DVDs were cool, man. Like I said, they offered us so much besides just the movie alone. And discovering games on every disc, regardless if the game was crap or not, was like finding a hidden treasure. Because kids love games and will play any game they can get their grubby little hands on. They're much less picky than adults, and that's kind of the great thing about being a kid. Because having an open mind at such a young age can allow you to partake in so many new experiences and really explore your interests free from any outside pressures that someone would feel in their early teens or adulthood. Being a kid rocked. But you can't drink, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it took so long to crank out. I've decided I don't want this video to drag out for any longer than it has to, so I have a special video coming that's made especially for you guys and my patrons and anyone who has supported me along the way. Thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for all your support. Have a great 2019. I'll see you guys later.